You are now tuned in to Power Podcasts, the Empower Hour. Peace and blessings, beautiful souls. I am Brandy L. Bates, author of Moonshine for the Soul, The Art of Grind, and many other books. I'll be your host for tonight. You can find me on Twitter at Soledad Francis and on Instagram at Brandy is winning. Most of these podcasts can be found archived on YouTube, hashtag power podcasts, but please listen to them while they still have all of their spirit and vitality by subscribing to us on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and or brandybates.podomatic. There is unseen energy all all around us. And where there is energy, there is potential. What has this year shown you? Like, what are some of your greatest takeaways emerging from a global pandemic slash quarantine slash lockdown? What have you become? Everyone matures and grows at different maturation points. Everything and everyone uh, has a different vibrational frequency. And yet everything is connected and interconnected. I admire the lotuses of humanity. The ones who grow from the mud and thrive. Who manage to make masterpieces of themselves in spite of environment in spite of upbringing in spite of you know being raised by ignorant parents or um, being subjected to trauma from every end of the spectrum and still rising up and uh, making the most of themselves Energy is always moving and changing, folks. Your greatest potential is completely, completely untapped and lying dormant within you. So picture yourself, picture yourself vividly, vividly. Close your eyes if you can and picture yourself vividly winning and that alone will contribute immeasurably to your success. What does it look like? You winning in life, you winning in your career, you winning in your relationships, your health, your mind, your peace of mind, your uh, in your spirit, in your soul, right? What is What does it look like? What does it feel like? You know, of course, there always will be lower energy days, bad days, Every day won't be perfect, but we can always find and pick and choose the good stuff, right? Great living starts with a picture held in your imagination of what you would like to do or be. The most extraordinary thing about the oyster is this. Irritation gets into the oyster shell right and that irritation fucks with the oysters biology it fucks with the oysters chemistry and it's ph and the oyster hates it but when the oyster cannot get rid of of irritants and irritation she uses the irritation to do the loveliest thing an oyster ever has the chance to do and if there are irritations in our lives there is only one solution one prescription one resolution one answer make a pearl it may have to be a pearl of patience but make a pearl re-up it's about interacting with the non-physical aspects of reality what am i talking about because that's where all the magic happens folks 
It's about getting completely out of your comfort zone and the total evolution, the total overhaul of your consciousness as you know it. Um, it's kind of like when you hear about people who have uh, the before and after, you know, extreme makeovers, extreme weight loss, extreme, you know, extreme 180 degree turnaround. It's, it's, it's an upgrade personified, right? That's what a, an upgrade looks like up close and in person. Um, see, no horse gets anywhere until, until it's harnessed. No stream or gas can drive anything until it's confined. No Niagara is ever turned into light and power until it's tunneled. No life ever grows, period. Great. No one grows great. Nothing can can become more, become more refined until it's focused, dedicated, and disciplined. Focused, dedicated, disciplined. And one of the widest gaps in human experience is the gap between what we say we want to be and our willingness to discipline ourselves to get there, right? You say you 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 trying to ball out, but you're not putting in no work. You're not doing the shit you could be doing. And we're all guilty of it to some extent. You have a very rare few who have their mind and their and their body in alignment, their thoughts in alignment with their goals and the shit they're trying to see happen, right? And they put it to work. And, and they and they reap the benefits that come with that, right? So what one of the craziest things is how, to me, you have single people, single as a dollar bill, right? Single as a Pringle. No children. They seem to have the most prolific advice for, you know, married people. Like, how do your singer, single friends have all this shit to tell you about your relationship? And again, this is this is always coming from somebody who can't they can't maintain a, a, a relationship if you paid them, right? We're not calling out no names, but how single people with no children have the most prolific advice, and how people who have never run a business all I oh I had to fight all my life, right? You never bought a house, you've never lived on your own. You've never lived anywhere outside your zip code or more than 250 miles away from mommy and daddy. Give the most prolific, best advice for people who are actually running businesses and who are homeowners and who are building and doing for self, who are raising villages, right? R- raising tribes, right? Uh, cultivating the soil of the future. Look. Like, we're all involved in some type of fight club, but we can't talk about fight club. That's the first rule of fight club, is you don't talk about fight club. So I say that to say, don't take criticism from anyone you won't take advice from. Stop listening to people who have never been on the field, never, never been on the court, never played in the playoffs, never experience what it's really like to get socked in the mouth by life right because life will sock the shit out of you like life will beat your ass that i mean this is real talk and sometimes when you have a strong uh support network or you have uh, a strong security base it insulates you it protects you from the blows of what you know can happen but a lot of people everybody don't have those protections so, you know, it's cool to move and speak and opine about theory and book knowledge and intellectualism. But stay out of grown folks' business when it comes to folks who are actually in the field making plays. Running plays that work. Meaning, they're living it. They're doing it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it appears as. They're doing it. One thing about me... I'm going to stay in my lane. That's what I'm always going to do. I'm always going to stay in my lane. Now, if I want to learn some new things, 
I'll explore that, you know, but I never try to get in your lane, right? It was Ben Okri in his book, The Famished Road. He said, one human life is deeper than the ocean. Strange fishes and sea monsters and mighty plants live in the rock bed of our spirits. The whole of human history is an undiscovered continent deep in our souls. There are dolphins, plants that dream, magic birds inside us. The sky is inside us. The earth is in us. Every belief, and I'm not just talking metaphorical. Every belief we have creates a portal for the corresponding parallel reality. So everything that you see day in and day out is built of the building blocks of your belief system, your uh, habitual thought patterns, the shit you were raised to believe, prejudices and assumptions, right? Pouring a little religion, pouring a little indoctrination, right? A whole lot of dogma and, and, and propaganda. And you have your average citizen. You have your average person who's just out there believing that they have free thought. Yeah, you, you have free thought, but so much of your thought is influenced and, and colored and painted and watercolored again and whitewashed and bleached and, right? Because you got all these different lenses and, and, and people projecting onto you and all these different filters. And so that determines what you see and your perspective of what you see, what you choose to focus on. That's what I said. It's not a coincidence they keep showing us police brutality. They keep showing us police state, police state, police state, right? Soldiers and, right, goons with, with badges, basically. And they keep showing you snuff film of black men being killed or suffocated. And they keep just force feeding you, force feeding you, force feeding you. Until you start to, to, to that marinates in your mind and you just start thinking the worst types of things it's it's it's, it's um it's really mk ultra technology but the moment you start watching the thinker a higher level of consciousness becomes activated i'm talking about get outside of the dogma get outside of the propaganda get outside of all the shit that you thought you knew you just swear to god right on god you know this because really, we don't know shit. As our consciousness and as our consciousness expands and opens up, you start seeing more of the spectrum of the shit we don't know what's going on, right? Eckhart Tolle reminds us the beginning of freedom, the beginning of freedom is the realization that you are not the thinker. You then begin to realize that there is a vast realm of intelligence beyond thought. That thought is only a tiny aspect of that intelligence. And so you also realize that all the things that truly matter, right? Beauty, love, nothing feels as good as, as being loved and being in love and loving someone, right? Love will have you seeing unicorns and, right, creativity, art, great food, dance, joy, inner peace. This is shit that matters, right? All of that, that arises from beyond the mind. I say, you know, the best days... The best experiences, the best circumstances, the best people are things that you never saw coming. That's greater than what you could have imagined, greater than your expectations. Like, or when you have no expectation and it just wows you because you, you brought an openness to the event or to the relationship or to the situation. Bring open awareness, meaning be open to whatever may come. 
be open to receive. Because everything that looks like it's bad, it, it, it looks like it's, it, it's this ouch. But really, there's gifts and rewards within that package. The shit you need never really comes in the package that you thought it was going to come in. That's the gag. That's the gag. God really be playing with you. Like, you can never understand any calling on your life if you don't know who you are or understand your purpose. And it's good to measure everything by the size and intensity of its call. So we plan our lives according to a dream that came to us in our childhood. And, and we find that life alters our plans, right? When you have, I don't, I don't know how many of you, you know, when you were a kid, you wanted to be a doctor or you wanted to be a school teacher or some guys, you know, you wanted to be a firefighter or uh, a pilot, you know, shit like that, right? And then life happens, right? Uh, uh, an oops baby or an uh, uh oh you know uh, death in the family so now you gotta work and now you gotta figure shit out right and yet at the end at the end from a rare height we also see that our dream was our fate and it's just that providence had other ideas as to how we would get there see destiny plans a different route we're not saying you're not going to get there, baby. But we're saying you don't know the route. It's going to take you a quicker way. Any of you use Waze, the Waze app, or you use Google Apps, uh, MapQuest, right? Different apps are going to take you different different direction on the GPS, right? And you might have your own way that you're accustomed to going to point A, from point A to point B. But what I'm saying is it's, it might be an easier, different way to get there. Stay with me. Destiny plans a different route or turns the dream around as if it were a riddle. And then it fulfills the dream in ways we couldn't have expected. I promise I'm about to braid this all up. It's about to get buttoned up right quick. Get to a point where you realize that the only good that can come to you, the only good that we have access to, will come via progress, right? How does progress come? Progress comes through either and or either education, go as far and as wide as you can and don't stop. And even when you stop with the formal education, keep reading the fucking books. Keep listening to the TED Talks. Keep listening to the podcast. Keep filling your mind with information that is going to help build the arsenal for your empire. Right? For your kingdom. Right? Or through uh, some type of tribulation. Some type of irritation. The irritation is what forms the pearl. The irritation is what forms the pearl. The irritant forms the pearl. No irritant, no pearl. Right? It's the pressure that forms the diamonds. Diamonds don't, baby. They, you got to go through some shit. Right? No pressure, no diamonds. You want the diamonds, baby? You got to deal with that pressure. And you don't get to determine the, the how that pressure, how, the, how it's applied. You don't get to determine how life applies pressure. Just know that life will apply pressure. Geniuses but be open to it. Here's why. Here's why. We are addicted to our beliefs. Okay? And when you when you understand that only way I could get ahead and reach new heights is if there's progress, whether that's our own individual personal progress and our relationships, like better shit can't come to you until you have better relationships and you won't have better. Everything hinges on relationships. Um, how much money you make based on the job you take, the people, you know, a lot of you, you can't get any further than the temperature of those who you predominantly spend time with so if everybody in your circle earns around fifty thousand dollars a year that's you're not going no higher than that and that's why you have people who once they've 
hit a certain mark, they'll dap you up and talk to you, but they're not going to hang with you. Not for real, for real, they're not. Because they know they can't learn shit from you. I mean, they can learn that. You and I know, we can all learn from each other. But after a certain, it's certain people are attracted to certain people and linked to based on vibrational frequency. Yeah, you may be attracted to, to, to someone, but if the, the vibes are not there, it won't go any further than that attraction, right? So we're addicted to our beliefs and we honestly think that our beliefs are cold, hard, scientific, factual truth. I mean, you will, I mean, people will argue to the death on some shit and that's your belief, baby. That's not fact. That's not real. We're addicted to all of the emotion behind the past. Somebody listening right now, you holding on to a grudge from when you was three or four, 16, 12. Some shit somebody said to you in the family and you holding on to a grudge. And the whole time the, the person has moved on with their life, they don't even realize you're still dealing internally with that. We damn our own selves more frequently and more deeply than anyone, any institution, any organized religion, any enemy, any opponent, any obstacle ever could. Nobody will ever do you as wrong as you do yourself. No one will ever. The shit that we say to ourselves, we defeat ourselves. We defeat ourselves in our in our words towards ourselves. How we look at ourselves, how we view ourselves, how we think of ourselves. You And so the people who believe in themselves and have high, high self-esteem and high confidence in themselves, we call them arrogant. Some people call them narcissists. I don't get, one thing about me, I don't get caught up in the narcissist, empath, bullshit, uh, talking head lingo. Because I really think it's, 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 um, it's made up shit that... We try to put these personality types on constantly dynamic changing individuals. Each and every man, woman, and child is multidimensional. So you can be, you know, you can be wealthy and ratchet. You can be um, very beautiful and yet very, very, very ignorant. You can, you can come from a certain background and that background have zero bearing on the heights that you go right it's it's we are walking contradictions and paradox so you can't put a label on somebody and say oh he's a narcissist or she's a narcissist or he's egotistical or she's arrogant you don't know their story you don't know their journey And really, I'm saying to you, you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to speak good on yourself. You have to speak highly of yourself. And when you see yourself, you have to see a fucking masterpiece. You have to see the David in the block of marble. You have to see your highest self even in the mud. The lotus is beautiful even though it grows in the mud. We damn and thwart ourselves with our words, with our actions. Nothing works if we don't come together and make shit work. Nothing great or substantial can be rushed. Not a muse. You're not going to rush no no muse. You think you're going to rush a muse? That's the thing about beautiful art. Beautiful art has to be conjured. It's like love making. You need the foreplay. You need the congress, right? You can't just jump on off up and dive off up in it, right? You, you got you to gotta take your time, right? It's like love making. It's a dance. It's choreography, right? You can't rush... Uh, to make a baby you can't rush you know people I want to get pregnant I want to get pregnant that's going to happen when it's supposed to happen and sometimes it's not supposed to happen for everybody not love the supreme said you can't you cannot rush love I know I know you wish you could I know I wish I could 
can't rush love. You can't rush a muse. You can't rush the journey. You cannot rush the process. The process happens in its own timing. That's out of your control. But certain things can slow it down and speed it up. I do believe that. But nothing substantial or great can be rushed. The re-up is about running plays that work. And direct experience. Not some shit out of a book. I'm talking about plays that aren't necessarily even in the book. Some shit you cannot find in the book. A lot you can, but some things it's information being downloaded from another dimension. So you're not going, that's not even, it hasn't been written. It hasn't been written. And sometimes you can't win by playing fear. Understand, please understand the most powerful nations, the most powerful militaries, the most powerful people historically, they didn't play by the rules. They'll give you a Bible and they'll give you a constitution and they'll give you a, a, you know, rubric on how to behave. They not doing that shit. They not doing that. They live in an entirely different, an entirely different reality. They doing what they want to do. And they say, you can't do this, but behind their back, they got something else going on. It's a sleight of hand. Be creative, be unpredictable, be playful, and be flexible. I'm going to say that again. Be creative. Whatever you need to do to get your mind in a creative state. Some of us, some people, they need to do some free writing. Some people have to go for a run. Some people need to spark up a blunt. Some people need to, you know, get a bottle. Some people, uh, they have to do yoga, deep breathing techniques, pranayama. Some people, they have to have sex because that stirs and opens portals for creative energy. Some, you know, everybody does something different. But whatever you need to do to get yourself in a creative uh, creative mindset and a creative state of being welcome unpredictable events and occurrences see some people have to be in control all the time and the problem with that is the best things again you can't control it because you won't even see it coming you'll see aspects of it but you may not know how the full uh, lay of the land looks be playful Stop taking shit so, so serious. Like, we, the shit that we should take serious, we don't take serious. We don't take serious. You know, it's hilarious to me. You have all these people that are going gung-ho. And I don't care. I don't get, again, I don't get caught up in none of the bullshit. You know, if wearing a mask helps me save, you know, some elderly man or woman from falling over, I'm going to do that. That's the least I can do. You know, but... You have people, oh, you know, wear a mask and hand sanitizing every five minutes, but you don't wear condoms. You, you know what I'm you, you, you feel me? Yeah. Or you got people, you know, oh, well, I don't eat this and I don't do this and I don't do that. But you, you know, eating groceries. Like, we, it's just, it's just, it's, it's the paradox. You feel me? Like, the shit that we should take serious, we it's a joke and we toy with we toy with our lives we toy with our health right and then the shit that we need to just relax and chill out because you don't have no control over it no way and you getting worked up ain't gonna change the shit at all then we get worked up and, and we mad and we ready to fight and your shirt is off and you in the parking lot talking shit right karen right but adapt 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 every year you have to reinvent yourself. It's necessary. It's so ne- it's so necessary. It's mandatory. Study those who've not only rose to the top. I'm not talking about mid-level, that mid. We're not talking about mid. The top, the best of the best. The creme de la creme. Cream always rises to the top. But study those who have stayed there 
Study those who play the long game. Study those who know how to constantly play a good hand. Or at least it looks like they do. Right? You have to keep reinventing and reinventing and being creative. Look at the greatest musicians. Look at the greatest writers and poets. Look at the greatest businessmen. Look at the greatest athletes. Look at the greatest artists. Look at those who have their their body bodies of work have stood the test of time. And look at they all they all share some of the same characteristics. They always reinvent themselves always see this decade is about everybody becoming a free agent everybody having their security blanket pulled out now some people have spare security blankets so they like oh okay cool but for others you gotta re-up and figure out some new shit you have to keep reinventing and reinventing and being creative and using imagination the mind is a beautiful powerful master and a dangerous powerful master it can be like a demon or it can be angelic and as 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 your master the mind is a monster and will invent and create all manner of monstrosities as a servant, your mind is godlike with superhuman miraculous abilities, gifting you with the ability to heal all things and, and so much more. And it all depends on what you value, what you hold dear. This is about the gateway experience. If you have not already, it's important to tap into tap into transcendental meditation. I mean, really, really try it. Don't Oh, yeah, I do the meditation a little bit. I'll be meditating when I'm in my car. No. Go somewhere dark and cool. If you have to go in a closet, go in a closet. If you have to go in the bathroom, go in the bathroom. If you have to do it in your car, if you have to do it in the garage, do it where you can do it, where you won't be disturbed. And it's dark and it's cool and it's peaceful. And really tap in. Again, some people get into the spirit a little different. Some people listen to music. Some people, you know, have a drink. Some people spark up some kratom. You know, whatever your thing is. I'm not here to judge you, but get there. If you can get your mind and breath work on point, you can get your life and everything pouring into it on point. And a crazy place to be is, is when you're eager to break out and take risks, you know, and get out of your comfort zone. You want to do that. You want to do that. Like that energy you had when you were 16 and 17 and 18, when you, you're ready to see things and your dreams are big and you know what you want to do. You know, some, it, it may have happened younger, some a little bit older. And as we get older and life beats you up and life beats you up and life happens and life happens, that's, it start it beats that energy out of us. But when you're there, you're ready to go, but you're also afraid of leaving the familiar. You don't, you're not going to let go of that job. Good pay every two weeks to start no dang on business. People talking about start a business. You think you're going to leave that good plush government job insurance, right? But here's the thing where you're safe and you're familiar and you're comfortable baby where you trying to go you can't go to where you trying to go and stay where you it just just can't happen and so let go of everything holding you back and take that leap by any and all means get to a place get to a place where you can alter your state of consciousness that's where you can access the unified field of all possibility i'm talking quantum mechanics I'm talking wormholes. This contains all the Akashic records, all DNA and ancestral ancient information. The same mitochondria in your body, in the cells of your body, 
is contains the same information from three million years from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation the same information is encoded in the cells and the only thing that changes is environment nature nurture what you got exposed to what you weren't exposed to that's what determines all the differences the unified field that's where all the dark matter and the dark energy is that is the multiverse this is where you can pull stuff through the gates of space time you can pull stuff do you follow me you can pull things, you can pull ideas and concepts, and you can set things in motion from between dimensions. I mean, if it, it can be as, as simple as you wanting, you know, you wanting extreme elite wealth. You you want wraith, you want wraith money and Maybach money, right? It could be you want to travel and you want to see all of the world it can be you want your body to to just be like when you enter a room <laughs> i mean they can't help but to turn their head whatever it is i mean it's nothing too big it's nothing too small baby it all can happen you can pull you can pull it into your reality and you can set the dominoes in motion to bring the people to you and the opportunities to you and the relationships to you and the opportunities. You follow me? This is where all the free energy Nikola Tesla dabbled in. Einstein said, or is credited with saying, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Look. What you call your reality is made up of the same stuff as our dreams, pliable, it's malleable. You can go back and take shit out and, and you know, the same way you can go back and when you grade your homework and you going back and you looking over your journals, you can erase stuff and cross stuff out and I don't feel like that no more. Boop, white it out. You can do that too. We're about to see technology totally restructure and change macroeconomics as we know it. The world is basically a type of hologram. It really is. And the material world is guided and directed by the non-material world. So what that means is solid matter, solid matter in the strictest construction of the term, it just simply does not exist, period. All the atoms that make up the physical, quote unquote, are just spinning, oscillating energy grids. That's all it is. You are a spinning, oscillating energy grid. The room you are in, the vehicle you last sat in, the food that you eat, all just spinning oscillating energy grid they are energy not matter and so many seem to like overlooking the fact that it's not just the small stuff that's made of energy right the can of soda the pack of cigarettes the book the light bulb the apple Everything is energy. The small stuff makes up the big stuff. And so all matter is just energy vibrating in a certain frequency range. It's like really back to fucking basic thermodynamics, basic physics, basic fucking chemistry, biology, basic science. We are no different, just energy. Our consciousness is plugged into a very specific energy range. 
right? And so because we're attuned to this specific energy range, our consciousness brings forth the world we know and love. And if attuned to a different energy range, you would bring forth a different reality, a different world, different experiences, different relationships, different bags, different jobs, different everything. Remember to remember there is no physical matter, just energy, just energy. That's all your memories are. Just energy. All our consciousness does or can do is interpret and then perceive that energy. And so our awareness creates form from energy the same way a computer creates images from code. The whole world is inside you. It's in your perspectives. It's in your heart. And so to be able to have peace. I mean true lasting peace that surpasses understanding. You must be at peace with who you are. With yourself first. And so to truly enjoy life. To get the most out of it. I'm talking about orgasms baby. Money, power, respect, love. Right? You must enjoy who you are. And once you learn how to master this, you will you will be protected from everything that makes you feel like shit. Like you can't go on. Like, you know. Because with this gift of recognizing who the fuck you really are. I mean, what you really have the potential to do. The ability embedded. Encoded in your spinal cord. So much life is teeming in your seminal fluid, in your vaginal fluid, in the gray matter, in your cerebellum to create kingdoms, to make power moves. Sometimes answers come to you in ways only you can understand. You know, angel numbers, synchronicity, serendipity, seeing shit. You keep seeing the same, you keep seeing the same omens or you keep seeing, uh, these things are codes. It's something trying to get through to you, trying to speak to you. That's why it's so important to have a clear mind to receive and understand the message. Otherwise, you'll miss it. You being sent signs and messengers and you just batting that shit off because you don't know what the hell going on. Because you can't tell. It's not clear enough for you. Each time you make a new choice that's in alignment with your future, Dr. Joe Dispenza reminds us, you are priming your brain to install the neurological hardware to actually think and act and feel like the person you want to be in your future. Right? So do this. Right after you wake up, Right after you wake up or before you go to bed. Your brain is in a frequency known as theta. Theta, 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 theta. Like theta phi beta, right? Theta is the brainwave frequency associated with like rapid, rapid programming and hypnosis. And I'm going to tell you why this is a beautiful place to be. Because you access this state right after you wake up and as you're falling asleep. And these are the best times to repeat and listen to affirmations and you know um, li- read out your goals read out your your your, your dreams uh, talk to yourself speak to your subconscious speak and drop the little seed into your subconscious mind drop all types of intentions and ideas into the fertile soil of your imagination and and you do this with the intent of reprogramming your subconscious mind for the best results Don't go to bed looking at the news. Don't go to bed with your phone looking at people's just random ass, just random ass ranting and venting. No, be intentional. Be intentional. And read out your goals, the shit you want to see. What are you grateful for? Read out, what do you want? What's tomorrow going to look like? What's next month going to look like? How would you like it to look? What and who all do you want in your future? That's what you need to be saying to yourself. 
right before you go to bed and when you wake up. What we have to realize is that we are part of the crisis. We're part of the pandemic. We're part of the war. We're part of the racism. We're part of all of the... We're either on one side or the other. And, and, and we're determining the outcome. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that on all levels. Our actions... At a personal level as well as a planetary level. We are either a part of the problem and or part of the solution. And if we do nothing, if you do nothing, you just keep going stat quote as is. Then d- disaster could, could be the final outcome. But it's really about sweeping around your own front porch. Start with the man in the mirror, right? Universe is waiting on you. God is waiting on you. The unified field is wide the fuck open. So talk your shit. Your thoughts become your words, which become your character. Come, you know, it becomes your attitude, it becomes your perspective, and thus your destiny. Look. If you've seen nothing else in this last year alone, and as you get older, you realize our time here is so small. It's so small and so short. And I'm not trying to, I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but life is short. And I'm not trying to bum through life. Constantly, constantly defeated. Constantly struggling. There is an easier way. There are alternative endings for you and me. And I also want to mention, you know, when you start tapping into that transcendental meditation and you start really going within it, I mean, really getting like when you really start opening those portals and, and to what's out there, uh, be intellectually prepared to react, to respond, to receive or reject. Possible encounters with intelligent, non-corporeal energy forms. When time, space, boundaries are exceeded. You know, it's, it's like when you consume psilocybin or DMT. You better be ready for what comes through into your, into your awareness. Because what you see is, 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 is for you. It's what you see is coming from what's within your consciousness. Like, I can't see what's going all on in your consciousness and you can't see what's all going on in mine. We have our own individual demons and monsters and we have our own individual angelic, you know, if I had to put a name on it. Because that space is rich with the unknown. Rich with the unknown. Re-up. Thank you so much for listening. Peace.